you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, the programme that introduces you to many believers, both Jews and Arabs, living in Israel today. Last week, we heard the story of Dan Alon, a Jewish believer living in the Negev in southern Israel with his wife, Dahlia. Whilst on a visit to America, they met a lady who happened to have the same camera as Dahlia and who happened to be a Jewish believer. A conversation followed and a friendship was started, which led, some months later, to Dan and Dahlia finding faith in Jesus. By this time, they were in their 40s. On returning to Israel, they eventually met other believers and joined a congregation in Tiberias, where they stayed for many years. As they grew older, they realized the Lord wanted them to move, and now they live in the Negev in the south, where they have started a small congregation. Dan takes up the story. Actually, we, we are holding a very small group of uh, what they call Russian-speaking believers, mainly uh, sisters. Maybe there's only one man that show up from time to time, but uh, mainly sisters. They are a very small group. And, but that's what we have now. Maybe there are more so-called believers in Mitzvah Amon, but they have all kinds of problems, so they, 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 they have, have very many problems to come. But, you know, we are not running after number. We know that the Lord put us there and He wants us to be there. And uh, a few years ago, when I was sitting in, you know, one day in, in our, our living room and, and asking the Lord, Lord, what, what are we doing here, actually? Why are we here? Why do you have brought us here? Because it looked like nothing happened here. And nothing moved here. Then He said to me, Look on Abraham. What age was Abraham when he came to Canaan, to the land of Israel, the land of Canaan? I say 75. Now, what age he passed away, went to be with me? 175. So how many years he was living in, in, the, in the land? 100 years? Yeah, you know, 100 years. What was he doing in the land? I was thinking, actually, in our, uh, what, they call it, what we think we are doing, he was doing nothing. He, he, you know, he or his family made a big mistake with Ishmael, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, Isaac, Isaac, and have these cattle and uh, properties and everything. But he was praying. He was, he was, he put an altar every place he was stepping. He put an altar. So the Lord said to me very clear, "I didn't call you to do. I called you to be." So first of all, you are, you are here to be here, to pray, to, to put your step here. What, what, what is going to be? It's my, my issue. It's my task. So, so that, what, that, that, way, that it gives so much relax, so, so much rest. You know, Lord, you know. If you want to do something bigger, you do it. We pray. And you know, that's it. So when you think about the future and what God is doing, the bigger picture, what is your understanding of the days in which we're living? What is he doing here in the land of Israel? You know, there are, there are um, I, I, I can say it in these words, uh, all the prophecies that are written in the Bible are for Israel, are written about Israel. There are no prophecies written about England, and not about America, and not about China, and not about other countries, but about Israel, especially about Israel. So we know the Lord revealed to us what He's going to do here, very uh, generally, not in, not in details. We don't know exactly how it's going to be. But we know one thing. We need uh, to do our small things faithfully, and we need uh, to serve him faithfully here, and to be prepared to be, to be ready. It's his body here and there, everywhere, to, to ready for him to come for his day, for the day that he's going to come. So every one of us needs to do his job he was called you know, to do. Now, we, we, 
we believe the Lord put on our heart, uh, instead, in, in more than the, the, the small group that we're doing, he, he put on our hearts very, very strongly the body and to pray for the body. And we say, because we, have, we are living in a very high place, uh, Mitzvah Amon is a very high place, it's the same level of Jerusalem. And the high places used to be very much places for prayer and also for the enemy, but also for prayer. And uh, on our heart very strongly is to establish a house of prayer in this place. That when, when people can come to the desert, take time with the Lord and, and rest and be in prayer. But we, we are waiting on the Lord. The Lord will open the way for us to 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 to. to to do something like that. So it's on our prayer right now. So right now, week by week, you just meet you and your wife and a, a few ladies and, and one man. Yes. And you pray and you study the Bible together. Yes. Yes, that, that, that's what we are doing. We, are, we try to meet once a week in, in the middle of the week to our wedding and, uh, and every other Shabbat. And the other Shabbat, well, when we are not meeting in our home, we are going to Be'er Sheva. We, are, we join the congregation Nachalat uh, Yeshua in Be'er Sheva. And we, we are part of, the, of, of, the, of this congregation. Our children are part of, of, uh, of the worship team. And I'm asked, I'm, I'm asked from time to time to give the, the message in the congregation. We serve as much as we can, you know, if we can uh, be be available for uh, translation. And Dali, my wife, sometimes she, she she's teaching the the young, not not the young children, but the youth. There's a small group of youth uh, she she's teaching, and we 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 try to uh, to what they call to to give the time as as as, as we can. What are some of the scriptures that you are turning to time and time again that you're studying together? Actually, now we start to learn regularly uh, a book. So we started with the book of John. The first, now we're still in the first uh, chapter of the book of John and uh, it's, it's very important. It's very important and because we know that uh, there's a big argument sometimes, especially especially Israel, but among the Jewish believers, about the divinity of our Lord, Yeshua. You know, who is he? And I think the, the book of John shows very clearly that Yeshua is God. He was and he is, and he will be. He is God. He is part of the triune God. And, and nobody can take it from him, you know? And uh, so it's very important. We, we, are, we are now in, in, in a time that so many deceptions coming into you know, the body, so many false things and uh, our enemy tried to, it's like a flood coming in into, into the body and we need to be very careful. We need much discern to understand where and what is the, the, the truth. So it's very important to learn to, to be steady on that, in, in, especially in these end times. Your story is one of obedience and also contentment because you know you're in the right place. And the fact that you became believers in your 40s when your children were, were growing up is significant. And also the fact that your children also have become believers as well. Yes, our children came to be believers and it's not by, by, by crazy, it's not, there's no guarantee that our children will be uh, uh, believers. It's only by His grace, by our Lord's grace. And it's so wonderful. We, they are, they, are, they are struggling, like I'm struggling, like every, everyone. If, if a believer say, I'm not struggling, I say, I say to them, you're a liar. Because all of us are, are, are struggling, you know. We are, we are struggling because we have an enemy that's fighting against us. And we are fighting with, with our enemy, we are fighting with our flesh, we are fight, we're fighting with all the temptation around us in, in this world. So our children are, fighting, are, are struggling, yes. But, praise God, they are, they are walking with the Lord, they're following the Lord, even the older struggling, and in God's way, they will continue until the last, last day. You've lived in America, you know what goes on there, 
And so I would ask you, what is your message to the church in the West? How should they be praying and supporting, not just you, but all the believers here in the land? You know, uh, the church without Israel is, is like a chair with, with two legs. And uh, the church and Israel are working together. And, in, and, uh, and, we, we, and so it needs to be a partnership. And the body all around the world and need to know that Israel is very important. And the body here is very important. And, uh, you know, first, first of all, is to stand with us in prayers. This is the most important thing, to pray for us, to pray for, for the believers. You know, we know be- believers are suffering even more in other places. And there's much very important to pray for them. Pray for the believers in, in China, pray for the believers in, in Northern Korea, in, in the Muslim countries. Yes, it's very, very important. I also not to forget the believers in Israel and to pray for us. And, you know, and, uh, and if it can be, it can support in other ways, it, it, it's wonderful. But, but uh, yeah, we, we, we know that uh, Israel is the, what they call is the, 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 the apple of his eye. And so our enemy also, he knows it, and he tried to fight as much as more as to, to you know, uh, to weaken us, to make us weaker, and, and to, so it's much, much warfare here, around this land, in, in this land. So we really need your prayers. Dan Alon sharing his story. And we'll hear from Dan's wife, Dahlia, on next week's programme. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. And The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of Jewish believers and Arab Christians living in Israel and the West Bank. If you'd like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website www.olivetreefund.org or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA in the UK. Join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>